So we are going to talk about the four different tissue types today. Those four types are epithelial, you know, the funny word that nobody wants to say. Muscle. Connective. And nervous. Now there's things we care about each of these. Most specifically, we care about their structure and we care about their function. So for the epithelial tissue, when we talk about function, epithelial tissue does really one major thing and that's to cover different things. So we either have epithelial tissue that covers our entire outside like our skin or epithelial tissue that covers pieces on the inside like the organs. Now if you're going to cover something, you want your cells to be very, very close together. So epithelial cells are very typically really tight. Just like this. Sometimes there's just one layer like that, and we would call that simple. And sometimes we have many layers of epithelial tissues epithelial cells, and we'll call that stratified. You want stratified in places like your skin, because on the outside, you're going to have a lot more stuff causing damage. If it caused damage to the outer layer, you're going to want another layer available. So we have cells that are very close together. We're interested in cells when we deal with the tissues. We're also interested in proteins. So specifically, proteins that are either in small pieces or in long fibers. When you think about epithelial tissue, which you saw in lab, you think of a lot of cells very close together, but you don't think about long fibers. So the proteins in epithelial tissues are small and not always very visible. Now we can move on to our muscle tissues. Muscle has one job, and that's to contract or pull something. Muscle contracts, it pulls, it moves. That's what it does. Anything that moves in the body is going to have muscle tissue involved. Muscle cells, similar to epithelial cells, have to be very close together to provide the strength needed to pull various things. However, you'll notice that muscle cells are significantly longer and they have long protein fibers in them. So even though the cells are very close together, the proteins look very different between the muscle tissue and the epithelial tissue. I'm going to jump ahead to the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue has a very simple job as well. It's to send signals. When nervous tissue sends signals, it typically does it from a large neuron. I'll draw you my poorly drawn neuron, which then has a long tail, which then connects to another neuron. Now you'll notice here that unlike the other two tissues, your nervous tissue cells are actually somewhat spread apart. They need to send signals long distances, so they'll be long cells, but they're not always touching each other. There are extra little helper cells that are surrounding the nervous tissue, but we don't actually get too involved in what those cells are. We'll only learn about maybe one of them later on. Here you'll see these two nervous cells don't even touch down at the end. So their cells are farther apart from each other than in the other two tissues. Now I also said we need to talk about proteins. So the proteins in nervous tissue, although proteins are important because they do everything, like the epithelial tissue, you're not going to see them as long strands. So you see these big cells, but the proteins are mostly real little things that go in between the neurons. So you see these little proteins will travel in between. 
and they'll go from one to another, but they aren't the long strands, so the protons are, proteins are small and almost invisible in nervous tissue. So we have tissue that covers things, tissue that moves things, and tissue that sends signals. But now we also need tissues to do pretty much everything else in the body. We need tissues for support, we need tissues for structure, and we need tissues to connect stuff. All of those tissues that help keep all the rest of the pieces together or do other jobs are the connective tissues. There's two types of connective tissues. Basic connective tissues, the typical ones, are mostly your support and your structure types of tissues. So for example, tendons, ligaments, and the tissue under your skin called areolar that you saw in the lab. Those tissues are made up of lots and lots of protein fibers. So similar to the muscle tissue, you have fibers that connect everything. However, different from the muscle tissue, you don't see in the connective tissue cells holding the fibers together. The fibers are outside of the cells. There are little cells, but they're far apart, and they help to produce all of those fibers. It's one of the reasons that connective tissues don't grow back well. So if you injure a connective tissue, such as a ligament or a tendon, there aren't very many cells to reproduce and rebuild. They have to build all of those long protein fibers, which is a little bit more difficult. So the connective tissue is support, it's structure, it has cells that are very far apart and very small, and it has many protein fibers that makes it similar to the nervous tissue in the cells, and similar to the muscle tissue in the fiber structure. All four of these tissues are found in almost every spot in the body, but they work together in different ways. So when you are going on forward to look at the organs such as the skin, you'll want to stop and say, okay, where are each of these tissues? What are they involved in? And then also always keep an eye out for those proteins because you know they're going to be important.